joined by April Redmond, the Chief Marketing Officer for the Kerry Group. April, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome. Over the course of your career, you've worked and managed across countries and industries. In your opinion, are the traditional lines between B2B and B2C marketing becoming obsolete or more relevant? I think, I think they're more relevant than ever. I think the needs of a business and the needs of um, consumers are very different. And I think the way in which you interact with each of those groups um, are different. So I think, I think it's more relevant than ever. As we move closer to a more global economy, more marketers like yourself are managing campaigns across different countries. What do you think the future holds for this area? Global campaigns need one organizing thought or one kind of one global idea, but I think it's essential to get the maximum return on investment that countries and clusters of countries are able to localize those campaigns and those kind of global ideas based on local brand insights. My experience is that if you try to just take a global campaign and cut and paste it across the world, it it doesn't work. So I think the global idea and the organizing thought like Coca-Cola equals happiness certainly is something that that you need at the heart of it. But but then I think the the local markets need the flexibility to bring it to life in a way that makes, makes most sense for that marketplace. Yeah, and would the Coca-Cola campaign be one of your favorite examples of this, or does any- yeah? I think I think for me, you know, Coca-Cola equals happiness is, is absolutely at the heart of the brand and, and the core idea for the brand globally. But how that looks in Ireland, for example, could be you know rooted in rugby, whereas how it looks in another market could be rooted in, in something else. So for me, it's it's a great example of a global idea, but then localized to really strike a chord with consumers on a local level. And go, going towards a, a more of a board level, and how has this, I guess, customer centricity and marketing in general changed the way organizations make decisions? I think that it's easy to say, but very difficult to do. So I think that a lot of companies that I've worked in in my 25-year career will say that they put the consumer at the heart of the business and it's absolutely essential to win in the marketplace. But the reality is is that very few businesses, I think, really do put the consumer at the true heart of their decision-making process. When they do it, it pays huge dividends. And when they keep the consumer really at the central core of the business, nearly secondary to everything else, that they, they beat out the competitor. But I think it's very difficult to do in practice. And I think that few companies at a board level are really um, as tuned into the consumer as they need to be. Yeah, in in my mind, I guess um, Apple would be a prime example of this. It's probably the main example. But is there is there any other organisations that taken a leaf out of Apple's book that are really focused on the customer and the marketing first? Or, for example, what are you doing? Well, um, I think for me, we we try to put the consumer at the heart of of our organisation, and I think we try to always put it to for the. To the forefront, so I think we're, we're on a journey, and I think we've made huge progress at putting the consumer at the heart of the business, what the consumer needs and wants. So, for example, the Denny brand in Ireland has, you know, has been a brand that's been around for a very long time, and that brand has evolved and it changed with consumer needs. So, you know, I think Denny is a perfect example, and we are still evolving the brand um, to, to meet the needs of, of of the consumer. But it is it is obviously very challenging. To, to make sure that you're always, you always have your finger on the pulse of those changes and that you're responding to them in a timely way. And on the other side of that, talking about the consumer, what has changed on the consumer side to warrant marketers becoming more, I guess, centric to the business and companies wanting to go closer towards this area? Well, I think, first of all, I think the companies that, that do put the consumer at the heart of the business, I mean, you, you talked about Apple, but there, there are loads of other um, Brands that do it, Apple, Burberry, Bowden, are all examples of brands that put the consumer at the, the true heart of the business. And I think that, you know, it's been proven when you do that, you, you win in the marketplace. I think the other thing is is that consumers are more demanding and more connected than ever before. So through word of mouth, they can make or break a brand literally overnight. So I think if you don't if you don't have your finger on the pulse of the consumer, I think it's, it's a huge business risk like never before. So I think it, it, it is a board issue and it's one that boards need need to be considering and more and more boards are, are, are looking at but, but it's still not where it needs to be. 
how have you, I guess, progressed Kerry Foods from a predominantly sales-led organisation to one that's more heavily focused on consumer marketing? I mean, I think we, we are still very much, you know, we're still very much a, a you know, manufacturing and sales-led organisation with um, an aspiration and ambition to uh, be more focused on the consumer. So I think we've made huge progress in that in area. So we're much more able to kind of look at consumer market needs than we've ever been, and we're much more able to respond to those needs than we've ever been. But we still are very much a cross-functional business with every part of our business, almost almost playing a um, playing a, an equal and opposite role. In some ways, that's a competitive advantage for us. So we have much more consumer centricity than we've ever had before, but we still have a really strong sales function. We still have a really strong manufacturing function, and all of those functions working together really delivers, I think, a competitive edge for Kerry in the marketplace. Yeah. And what, what do you think the future holds for the Kerry Group in this area? I think over time, the consumer will, you know, will really become the core of carry. It's, it's, it's evolving and it will really become the core of carry. And I think all of the, all of the different functions will, will orient themselves around kind of meeting consumer and shopper needs. And I think that will, that will be ultimately the place that will, will end up. But I think that that's, that's evolving. And you personally have gained a reputation as an instinctive marketer and you've described yourself as an informed risk taker. How do you balance risk, instinct, and creativity? I think for me, you know, I, I bring years of experience, so that helps me make decisions. I have a, you know, I bring kind of an analytical mindset to things, and I, I think the, the big thing is, is permission to fail. So um, I, I give myself and my team permission to test and learn and fail when necessary and learn from that and move on. So I think any anything that's game-changing if you go into it with a mindset that you have to win every single battle, you're, you're not going to do that. So I think the permission to fail and learn and test and learn is really key. Yeah, absolutely. And how do you get the most out of that team, out of your team? I mean, I, I think I give them stretching goals, um, but you know, and I, I empower them. I give them feedback, which comes in the form of both support and challenge. But I think for me, the way to get the, the best out of people is to really empower them. And I, I'd be quite empowering and supportive and I think that that people when they're empowered and they're given runway they achieve so much more than they could if if you told them what to do. And what do you think it takes for a marketer to succeed today? I think it's deep understanding it's still deep understanding of what consumers want and need um, and the the, the the commercial skills to, to make sure those needs are addressed and while that hasn't changed I think it's it's much more difficult to understand what consumers want and need now than it was in the past. I mean, before you you basically could go out and do a, do do some research and and have an understanding of what people needed. Now, the dy- it's, it's such a dynamic kind of marketplace. I mean, people are online, people are changing kind of their views on things nearly daily and keeping track of what consumers want and needs and what and what their opinions are I think is really, really difficult. They talk about big data. I mean, everything consumers do is recorded in bits and bytes. And while you might think it's easier than ever to say, okay, let's look at those bits and bytes and extract insight, there's just a, such a tsunami of data, consumer data out there, getting to the real pearls of wisdom out of that to say how are we going to translate that into commercial opportunity I think is quite difficult. Yes. So I think really it's still about deep understanding of consumers' want and needs, but I think it's, it's getting to that requires much more of a skill set, which much, looks much more like a, a technology kind of a CV or skill set than it would a kind of a, a traditional classically trained kind of P&G market, marketing skill set. Are you going to look at, uh, you talk about data and big data, are you looking into this area for the future? Are you investing? We are, yeah. Yeah, so we'd be looking at, we'd be looking at how to understand what's happening with our consumers across all of the various data sets that we have and, and, and extract insight from that. So we have work streams set up whereby we're, we're seeing if there are, are ways we can do that quickly, effectively and efficiently. So yeah, I think it's, it's the wave of the future for marketing really. Yeah, absolutely. And Kerry Foods is a fantastic story of Irish entrepreneurial success. What is the company focus on in the coming years apart from big data? From a, an overall perspective. 
Yeah, so I think for, for us, we, you know, our core areas are, are, you know, our meat, dairy, and meals, and we'll continue to be focused in, in those areas. I think what we'll be, what we'll be looking to, to unlock in the years ahead is, you know, consumer and shopper insights So the whole big data piece. We'll be looking to unlock our customer relationships and win with customers. Part of the thing that makes Carrie special is we have quite a big R&D skill set and, and, and actually getting to technology, proprietary technology to address consumer and shopper needs, I think will continue to be key for us. And we have world-class manufacturing. And I think the other thing that we've spent a lot of time focusing on is how to build high-performing teams. So we've invested a lot of money and time in building really high-performing cross-functional teams. And, and as I said earlier, I think that's a real competitive um, advantage for carry small teams of people working cross-functions to drive our business forward, I think is, is, is a really unique thing that makes Carrie very, very different from other companies I would have worked with. Yeah, adaptability sounds key there. Yeah. You have a record for delivering sustainable revenue growth and excellent marketing practices. In your opinion, what has been the key to your success? I think for me, I think I build, I build teams, I build kind of empowered, cross-functional, high-performing teams, and I think if I could say there was one single thing, that would be it. I think the two, the two other things would be, you know, I've always brought consumer and shopper insight to the core of anything that I've done and, and made sure that that was the core of our way of working, and I think the final thing is a return on investment mindset, so I don't do anything unless I understand how we're going to measure it and how we're going to report value back to the business, so I think really the core is getting great, brilliant, high-performing, cross-functional teams working together, but insight, return on investment, mindset, and I guess fostering this, this, this creativity, kind of this test and learn creativity, those are the other essential elements that I've, I've brought through my career. ROI is key, and it's something that marketers, I guess, forget about often. They, they often look at creativity, but they forget about the measures, the metrics, and the return, what's the actual return on what they're doing. Yeah, and I think I think that that would be that would be maybe fine twenty years ago. But I think in, in in reality now, if you want to be taken seriously as a marketeer, if you're not talking return on investment and you don't have an understanding of the commercial impact of the the activity that you've undertaken, I, I think you're just not at the races anymore. Well, thank you very much for your time, April Redmond, the Chief Marketing Officer for the Kerry Group.